kind of ladder up through or whatever, but you know, potentially ones down the line as well. So he is a very confident chap, a very friendly chap as well. Uh, as you can see, uh, either he is great or he is jet lagged. I completely understand. That's a great esports excuse right there. I mean, <laughs> we uh, we call that one the option select yes. where I'm from. Just if, if I lose, it's because that. But if I win, it's because I'm absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and going into this, we'll see how he's going to be able to play out for HK Esports, one of the highest ranked clans in the entire game. If you check out the clan boards, you will always see them up at the very top. Players from all over the world have flown in here to play this tournament, and we're getting into it. Hog Rider already on the way for Derek to try and do some damage. As you get out, at least one hit on to me. He's got a slight life lead right now. These means I can't imagine by themselves going to do too much. We see the ice spears have deployed. Uh, to really do a good job of just sort of slowing them down. But the life lead is still very much going to Derek. But I mean, a little bit of life, not really been too much moving forward into the game. But he does manage to deploy himself an elixir pump. Going to give himself a little bit of an advantage, hopefully. Uh, if he can avoid some pushes for quite a while. It's so funny, but it's just like casting with the same person. I come <laughs> transitioning from brother to brother, it's fantastic. So it's like casting with yourself. Uh, you'll see that later on, I'm sure. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's like a mirror. All right, well, there's one of those in this game as well. Uh, <laughs> giant for now, we're going to push on towards this cannon. So opting for a giant as one of the push conditions. So we're going to see probably damage being followed up by that giant, as it is a great tank here for the game. I mean, that, that really is how, how you build yourself uh, a core push. It's a really sort of standard push you see a lot. Is high health target supported by uh, the range to really support them and get them in. But then you've got things like the Hog Rider who just very aggressive pushes does he, power. Does he even have the air with the, Okay, so I, I, the arrow's going to come in there. But that got a lot of damage done. The commitment to the arrows was a little bit late there for Derek, unfortunately. And that was quite a bit of damage done to his right tower. But let's have a look at Derek's deck right now. He hasn't got a lot of beef, but he has the aggression in the Hog Rider. But a lot of cheap units right here. We've got both kind of goblins right now. Has the arrow to deal with that sort of tactic away at the moment, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's very cheap units. So when we go down to this last sort of 20 or so seconds, we get that double elixir, I expect we're going to see Derek's deck just explode. Good reaction to Hog Rider in the end. The Barbarians should be able to chew through him. Uh, and then once again, they're well positioned now for the Giant to be able to push forward. And Hog Rider comes out as well. So a big, big push coming out from Jason here to try and break through. But look at the commitment everywhere. This arc being created by Derek to try and uh, greet it. Now the thing Didn't is, work, though. Derek's defense is scattered right now. They were all going for different things, so the Giant did manage to, while taking a lot of damage, did quite cleanly manage to run through and punch the right yeah. tower a bunch, getting it onto 400 health, and as we, uh, we're now approaching uh, overtime, that's going to be really dangerous, because if he can stall out and save this right tower until overtime, all he has to do is finish off 400 health to take game one. But again, you've got you've to think about it here. From Jason, he's been committing to, with these elixir collectors to the kind of later stages of this game anyway, so every single time he's able to make one of these pushes, it's very, very powerful. That Hog Rider jumps through, though, and there's not going to be able too much damage actually going on to it. This is still a big push. He's going to take this tower. That's one tower going for Jason against HK Esports Derek. 30 seconds left on the clock and counting. We see a few goblins slipping through, but the tower's going to do a nice job dealing with them by itself. The archer's out really well placed to maximize the damage there. And again, goblins are not going to do too much, but we are getting into dangerous overtime territory. And right now, Jason does have an advantage by 600 yeah. health and the tower is still standing. And still, he uh, tries to get through there. The hog rider goes through, but he gets brought down just at the very last second. So no tower falls. And that is four seconds left on the clock. That is going to be a win here in game number one for Jason. Now, I really like the way Jason just secured that at the end. He was like, okay, right, I've got the tower. I'm going to put every single unit I have on the offense right now. So if he tries to counter push, my minions and my units are just going to completely soak up all this damage. One thing he's getting out of those elixir collectors that early on, you could see it was exactly the same push crafted twice with giant, what else do we have behind it? Uh, goblins, even the hog rider to kind of jump in as well. Overall, the unit composition that he brings in each of those pushes is extremely hard to deal with unless you have maybe arrows and some extra extra oomph to actually bring down the giant during all of that. So very, very difficult to deal with that composition. I'm just really liking the variety in decks we're seeing right now. A lot, obviously, before yeah, we saw yeah. uh, the mortar deck, so very building heavy, very spell heavy, especially in set one, which was a, a crazy set to start things off. Again, a lot of spells, a lot of tactical building placement, but this is straight up units for the most part. We are seeing uh, the odd uh, arrows here and there, but for the most part, it's basically just units and hard pushing yep. that's doing most of the damage in this set so far. So Derek is down a game right now. Um, he did mention to us before, like you said at the start, he has a healthy amount of decks prepared for this top eight. So I, I predict he's made a switch, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Both yeah. players sort of being patient right now before they make their first move. He's got information about his opponent. You're leaving it to 10 elixir. You're going to spend that some of that elixir. Pekka is already the choice here for Derek. 
uh, to move down the right hand side against the Elixir Collector up on the top. Now this is a, uh, an immediate change. We see the use of the Pekka as a first card as well. Okay, okay, this is a change in my deck. I have a Pekka now. We can see Jason retaliating with a, a giant in the left to maybe try and not force too much of a push in the right uh, by Derek. Just trying to force him away because the giant, wow, manages to cleanly get uh, through. Look at this. I mean, he's not committing anything to the left because he knows he's going to have to spend something to deal with the Pekka. But Loon coming in as well here. This could be a lot of danger. And the oh, rain's rage. going down. Oh, that's a big commitment there to that tower. Is he going to oh take it? Yes, he days. does. The balloon gets through. Big, big damage. That was incredible. That was seconds. That tower was dust after mere seconds. At the same time, though, look how much the giant did on the other side. <laughs> I mean, it killed the tower as well, so it's one for one. It's a big commitment throwing down rage on the aggressive, because if you do, then, you know, you could lose things on the defensive, but having spent so much into that. Have you ever heard the, the phrase, the gentle giant? That's not a gentle giant. Jason's <laughs> giant is aggressive, but we can see Derek, almost his entire deck, I think his entire deck is completely different. Every single card is different than what we saw last time. Yeah, it's uh, cool to see here with which implemented in as well. Hog Rider on the left-hand side now, whilst the Pekka is being kind of distracted and freeze to deal with the Hog Rider, uh, since he didn't have anything else to pop down. Wow, the Hog Rider is just completely dealt with. I think that might be another adjustment. Is Derek just using the freeze on the Hog Rider? Uh, so this used earlier on, but a big push on the right by Jason. Not sure if the Giant's gonna go down or if he's gonna get some damage off. The skeletons are deployed, but the minions are gonna keep the uh, Elixir Pump busy as well. Yeah, that was not too bad, actually. I mean, he cleaned up with the arrows, but he's probably gonna end up losing that tower eventually. That's so much damage actually going onto it. The minion hole was on down with 10 health. Wow. 10 health remaining okay, on that tower. What do you do if you're Jason in this situation? Do you leave that tower alive until overtime, or do you just take it out now to get the positioning you advantage to? Uh, be able to spawn things further up. Set up defensively, try and deal with this rage, and if he can deal with this rage from here on out, <gasps> you can arrow it. It doesn't matter, but he's frozen some of that. That balloon is on top of that tower. Not much more. He's actually gonna, just going to go straight for the big push, and I don't think he can't save that. Oh, tower. that was no expensive way. for Derek. This is so many units coming in. The big crowd oh. tower is taking so much damage, and this might be game two. That looks like that is it. And each time, there you go, GG. Jason will take. Game number two. This Each time the rage comes in, you see it goes trade for trade. When you commit to something like that on the aggressive, you don't have enough elixir to deal with the follow up push because in this game you have a defender's advantage. But it all boils down to elixir management as well. I mean, as soon as you commit hard on one lane, the opponent has a, has a choice to make. Do I use my elixir to counter this push or do I make something work in the other lane that he might not be ready for because he's just spent all of his elixir? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very kind of. I want to say an all-in and aggressive style that we see uh, when it comes to that rage play. Oftentimes you uh, listen to a, a lot of people and they say, well, actually rage can be used in a very, very strong defensive stance to go kind of um, troops for troops. But then because you're attacking 40% faster, moving 40% quicker, you're going to get the better trade and then you can push onto the other side uh, in terms of elixir management. But you know, that's uh, by the by. We are going on to game number three. Mostly. Now, it's it's definitely worth pointing out that this could be the potential for yet another upset in this tournament. As we've said before, Derek is a consistent top leaderboard player in the game's actual uh, live client. And Jason, as he said himself, he just turned up because he loves the game. He just wants to play. And here he is, one game away from taking home, uh, you know, debatably one, one of the best players in the world at Clash Royale. A 3-0. Not even a 3-1, 3-2, 3-0 yeah. right now, maybe. You've seen that Hog Rider coming out from Jason already. Gets on towards that cannon which will hold it off quite nicely. Ice was are being deployed by Derek as well. And between them on live, there's like a thousand trophies difference. 4,000 against 3,100 or so. so. And especially when you get to a higher level of trophies, that thousand makes a, a bigger difference than it might appear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here, though, on a level playing field with all cards same level, commons eight, rare six, epics three, legendaries one. Uh, not as easy. This is a big push, though, from Jason once again. That giant tanking up so much. He crafts the units behind it so well to pump out damage. And look how well they've got through here. Oh, my word. Already oh down to 400 health and lowering. 160, 118, 72. Wow! I'm going to be copying this comp when I go home. Oh, my God. Jason with this giant goblins. Archers and Hog Rider comp. Even the Barbarians were in that one, actually, compared to the Hog Rider. Now, that was incredible, because right now, this is, this is, like, Jason's been using the same deck the entire time, and Derek, every single game, has tried to change, and it's just not working. Jason's just too much right now. Yeah, that's very, very difficult to deal with. Hog Rider on the way. Giant thrown down in the middle as well. This is going to be the distraction here for maybe the Hog Rider to do something, because realistically, what do you deal with? Do you deal with the Giant that's going to do some damage, or do you deal with the Hog Rider here? Likewise, 
He took so much damage on his towers it's, from it's, that. It's just the benefit of taking a tower so early. You get the uh, the luxury of really being able to play on the back foot if you want to, but then any aggression further that point is going to be so much more dangerous when you know I'm winning right now. Yeah. I am two games up and I've taken a tower. I, I don't have to commit, but you do. I'm you have to do something. I'm absolutely loving Jason's deck. He hasn't had to switch up and look at this. But I mean, for good reason. Arrows are going to go down. They don't do too much. The Barbarians will kill that Hog Rider. And the Hog Rider on the other side is actually getting a bit more damage done with the giant goblins, a uh, spear of goblins as well as barbarians. This is just incredible play from Jason right now. I mean, re really splitting off his, his just constant loads of units. And Derek's trying to get something going if he can it's take a tower. It's an opportunity, uh, but everything's spread out everywhere. The arrows will take down uh, the mini hold on the left hand side, but other than that, Look at the damage, it's all very separated up. And there's 20 seconds left on the clock and I don't think you can push down one of these towers. But even if Derek does manage to you know, make a miracle happen and take up one of the towers, his tower's down to 250 health yeah. and there's a giant oh, and a Hog Rider. Gonna get it. Game? That Hog Rider is gonna bring home the win. That's the 3-0 from Jason. He advances onto the semi-finals. Brilliant stuff from Jason. I don't think that was the result anyone was expecting. So huge props to Jason. Obviously props to Derek. Making top eight out of 200 players is no easy feat, especially when you are coming over uh, from overseas, you know, from Hong Kong to, to, to Berlin. That's not exactly a quick trip, but Jason will advance as your third semi-finalist today. And you know the funny thing is that we've had Finland versus the world in every single one of these series. And in every